Marvel's post credit scenes are now hurting the MCU. Marvel's post credit scenes have been a hallmark of the MCU since the very beginning, but Phase 4 is running into some issues with its stingers. Marvel's post credit scenes are key to the MCU, but as shown in Phase 4 movies such as Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings and Eternals, they can have an adverse effect as well. Ever since the MCU started in with 2008 in Iron Man, end credit scenes have been a hallmark of the shared universe. Marvel wasn't the first and certainly won't be the last to use an after-credits stinger, but the sheer amount of the them, and the way they laid the breadcrumbs for the future turned them into a major selling point of each movie, building out the interconnectivity from film to film and phase to phase. What started with Samuel L. Jackson's Nick Fury emerging from the shadows to talk to Tony Stark, Robert Downey Jr., has become more complex over the years, ranging from post credit scenes that set up the next movie to those that helped shape the entire Infinity Saga. So far, Avengers Endgame is the only MCU movie without a post credit scene, reflecting its status as the end of that journey and story, but subsequent movies have picked up the baton. So far, MCU Phase 4's three movies have delivered five different credit scenes. Unfortunately, though, some of these are presenting new challenges for the MCU, either insofar as what they're setting up isn't quite as clear or, in many cases, that Marvel's end credits scenes are overshadowing the movies themselves. That's not to say Marvel needs to stop using after credits teases, which would presumably never happen anyway, but they are arguably hurting the MCU rather than helping to make it exciting and great. From the very beginning, Marvel's post credit scenes were integral to what Kevin Feige and co. were building, and they were particularly perfect for Phase 1 of the MCU and the lead-up to the Avengers. Each movie added a new piece to the puzzle, whether that was Nick Fury's recruitment drive or neatly setting up the next movie to come with a nice tease of what to expect, such as Mjolnir in the desert. Of course, part of what made these work was that it was something fresh and at least relatively unique, and it helps that the setups, even if somewhat basic by the standards of what the MCU's after credits scenes have been since, worked as solid, intriguing scenes in their own right, offering a clear path for the future. This continued throughout phases 2 and 3, whether Marvel's end credits scenes were set up, a gag, or sometimes both they succeed in everything they aim to do. That is, the post credits scenes gave a tantalizing hint of what was coming soon, most were rewarding enough, both in terms of being enjoyable moments and intriguing teases, that it felt worth staying around for, and crucially there was always a sense of momentum to them. That was critical in setting up the Avengers, where one MCU post credits scene neatly led to the next movie, but it fit throughout both on a micro level, e.g. the Maximoff twins in Captain America, Civil War was a great tease for Avengers, Age of Ultron. And on a macro scale too, with the clear vision of Thanos as the overarching villain. All the way there was a sense of expansion and escalation that was necessary to continue developing the shared universe, but the scenes mostly, with some exceptions, felt like nice additions to the movie they were attached to, if they weren't there, then that itself was still a major, satisfying event film, again, with exceptions such as the more disappointing MCU movies like Thor, The Dark World, or Iron Man 2.